you finally got your car back together, but you have some concerns about the float height, the float adjustment. You don't know if it's correct. You may have some other concerns with regard to, you don't know if it's gonna be leaking gas past the floats when they're supposed to be shut, and you don't really feel comfortable about putting this car back into the bike yet. You may also have concerns about the throttle position sensor. And one thing you may be overlooking now is how you may have beaten the crap out of these screws to get this carb taken apart. And now you went and used the same exact screws as I've done here to put it back together. While these screws are not completely gouged into the metal, let's go and take a trip over to Ace and get some replacement screws for this, as well as the screws for the hose. Put this back together properly so we don't have to beat up this carburetor again and break stuff. Do it right. Test the float height. Test the throttle position sensor. Make sure nothing's leaking through and going to fill up and flood everything. Feel comfortable about it before we put it back in. Let's get started. Screws here are an M4. I'll get one size to this length. M4 70 by 20. I'll take two of those. See old versus new right here. It's an obvious upgrade. It's the same thing on this side, so I'll just grab two more. Take care of these next, there's not much left of them. There's also M4, I think a little taller though. I'll use an M425 for these, that'll be just fine. Okay. Gonna be replacing these screws right here. Four on top, four on the bottom. Size it up, see what we got. And this looks like an M5. Found a 580 by 10, let's see how this looks. Get to hand turn that in, it's a little hard, I don't have the tool on me, but this seems to do the job. Flip the carb over. I got four more, these may be the same size as the other ones, but let's take a look and be sure. No doubt these are M5 too. Let's get a length. And if so, we'll just grab four more real quick. They actually have a 12 that more closely aligns to these. I'm going to recheck the other ones, but I'm going to go with 12 for this. Just like that. Now, so I checked these bottom screws right here are slightly longer than the uh, top ones. So it is appropriate that these will be slightly bigger, these 12s instead of the 10s. Very good. I've replaced these already, but I've screwed a couple of them up. So I just want to uh, get a couple of extra spares. We can see that, that this one's buggered up a bit. Uh, some are worse. These are for the bottom covers right here. So I'm going to go and get a couple of these. And this is M4. And this looks like a 470 14. So let me try that out. Yeah, it seems right. I'm going to grab a couple of those too. Just to refresh the ones that got messed up. We're done. Any screws for the top cover because I already had them. They're also going to be an M4 of different sizes depending on if it's going over the bracket or not. So you would have to use your discretion there. Got a bit ahead of myself. Got four of the small ones. I don't, I don't know why. I'm just gonna go ahead and replace ones from the rubber hose and this air box, get it out of the way and move on with the rest of the job so that when it comes time to install everything, I've got the newer and improved screws on here. Next this, using the longer ones. This is so easy while you're watching this and not doing it. Go to Ace, get the screws. Come back, I'll wait. Now your airbox won't fall off. I'm gonna replace the screws on this bracket now. And these are the short ones. We'll flip it over and do the other side. These are the ones slightly longer. As for these, I'll swap these out on an as-need basis. These will go in the garbage where they belong. Let's go over really quickly things you will need for this project. Besides obviously the carburetor, we're going to need a, a funnel, uh, preferably one that will stick into a hose. And, and speaking of hoses, a hose that's the size of the fuel fitting right here on the carb that we'll be able to both blow into and use as a filling hose on a stand to put fuel in the carburetor. And something to use as a stand, that being said, slotted screwdriver for opening up that screw on the bottom that we're gonna to use to check the float height. This goes without saying to open the bowls or hex key. 
a piece of fuel line that's the right size to fit over these fittings here on the bottom of the bowls but that is also clear and thin enough that we'll be able to get an accurate reading so this is one that I picked up which is the kind you'd use on a weed eater some sort of device that measures in millimeters with precision like these calipers I guess you could also have some sort of ruler that does precision measurement of fractions of millimeters. A level of some sort. Uh, you could also use a, a phone app, I guess if you can, uh, to use as a level on top of the car. Wow, that's level. Also, not required, but <laughs> recommended. At least one rebuild kit laying around if you got this bike. Here's a rebuild kit. You see, there's a kit right there. Why would you not want to have one of these laying around? And if you look at this kit, you can see that a very good portion of what we're dealing with here directly relates to <laughs> the problems that we're about to face. We got the covers that we're going to take on and take off, take on, take off. We have the seats for the floats. We got the float needles right there is a good portion of that. So have a kit like this laying around. So first order of business, I'm going to stick the hose on the end of where the fuel line would go onto these carburetors. This assumes like you've just finished rebuilding these carbs and we're ready to start this procedure. The first thing we want to know is, does it leak? Is gas just going to fill up way past? Are they not going to shut off? Is it going to flood? And I would expect in this position, there's no gas here. This is how it sits in the bike. It should allow air to pass because the needles that seal the floats are wide open. So I'm going to blow into it. I don't think you could hear it on the, on the camera. Take my word for it, air is blowing past. I would expect, however, that if I turn this carb over like this and the floats both fall down, the needle should seal. I should not be able to blow air through. When I say blow air through, I don't mean hook it up to an air compressor and blow all the rubber seals out. I mean, with your mouth, you should not be able to blow into the hose and blow air through. Yeah, airtight. If you cannot pass this test, there's no sense of going any further because if you can blow air through, gas is going to leak through and it's just going to keep filling and filling and filling until you run out of gas. The engine's going to run rich, the, the, the float height is not going to be maintained, it's all going to be garbage and you're never going to be able to set this anyway. You need to go back, you need to open it up, you need to find out what's wrong, what's not seating, if you need to replace the parts in there with a rebuild kit, you need to open up one at random, uh, take the whole float mechanism out, put your finger over one entirely blow into it and then see if air is actually leaking from the other one remember it could not only be leaking from the needle in the middle but around the brass seat itself there's an o-ring that it could be leaking from so you have to be mindful of that either way the point here is if it's leaking we go no further but in this case we have a good seal we could continue onward to make this job a lot easier, I'm going to pre-mark the areas on this carburetor. We know that the line is going to have to sit between 7.5 and 8.5. I'm going to mark these two marks here. You can see I already have a, a mark from previously. This is eight millimeters right here. This is gonna be the middle point. It's just a very light scratch with a razor blade, nothing crazy. I'm gonna do that first. And while I have eight millimeters set up, I'm just gonna do it on the other carb. I've actually appropriated a feeler gauge at 0.5 millimeters for this purpose. Lock that down on 0.5 and scribe that in. I'll do the same with the other side. Staying within the lines, I, I verify my work. And I can see, yeah, yeah for better or worse, we're looking about one millimeter off by eight on both sides. I'm being extremely particular here. Looking good. Everything's marked up, ready to go. I would like to point out for clarification that with the bike at its center of gravity, I'm standing up straight now. The carbs are still cantered at 16 degrees. That is these pipes right here are leaning towards the low side at 16 degrees. As demonstrated here, you might find it best to use a phone app, just as I'm doing, to canter the carb and shim it from under to get that same 16 degree offset before you do tests. This will allow for the greatest consistency. To be able to raise the carb slightly off of the table and to provide adequate support so it doesn't move, I filled a small box with a dead battery and some shell casings. That'll weigh down this box when I tape it shut. The carb will sit on top of that, uh, perched on an angle, and then I will have a cable tie here, and I'll show you how I use this cable tie to adjust the pitch or canter of that carb.
The heavy box secures the car, but while this cable tie sets the pitch, I'll use a level to set how much of an angle I want and tighten and loosen the cable tie accordingly till I get the exact amount of degrees I want of lean on this carb. Every measured this angle here by balancing the bike and putting the carbs back in the bike and measuring the tops here, the angle, actually got 13 degrees, not 16 degrees. So I wanted to point that out. And here's what it looks like from the front. So we're gonna begin our first test, which is making sure the carb is leaking. The bowls aren't gonna overfill with gasoline, but more so to the point to make sure that the seals aren't leaking for the covers for the bowls. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure these screws are closed down here. Before I begin, I'm gonna hook up my hose right over here. On the other side of the hose, I've inserted my funnel. I'm gonna set this funnel up on my scaffold here to ensure that it's held higher than the carburetor. We can see the funnel's now set up for this operation. I'll pour gas into the funnel, let it fill up into the bowls. We're gonna check for leaks anywhere in and around the car. Being completely filled within both bowls and up this hose, at one point, one would expect this level to stop as long as I don't bump into it and not go any lower. The only reason that this would ever go lower is evaporation. If I were to wait several minutes and watch this drop, I could see that there would probably be gasoline leaking through somehow into other parts of this carburetor. If it didn't drop, it would be a good indication that the floats were closing and nothing was dropping down. So I'm gonna add a little bit more, just to make this functional. Okay, then I'm going to mark, attempt to mark the outside. So you can see it's right, right at the, the, the top of that black dash. Now I'm gonna hit the start button. If it is dropping, it is dropping an infinitesimal amount after five minutes. This funnel is really small. Like here's a, here's a razor blade for comparison. This is a tiny funnel and this is all the way down the bottom. So, so a very small amount can evaporate off. Also a, a little bit could be leaking by very slowly after five minutes, but there's not really a leak here. I could replace those just as a matter of demonstration and we can retest this later. We may do that as we go into these. Also looking under them after over five minutes shows that there's no gas on the cardboard. There's no weeping uh, from any of the seals here on the side of the uh, bowl covers. There's essentially no leaks. So for the purpose of this test, if, if I were to say we can't go any further because the carbs are leaking or the needles are, are not seeding and letting gas through, that's not an issue at all. It's not gonna stop us from going to the next test. However, given this performance, if somebody would ask me if they felt they had to replace the needle and seats on a carb that was showing something like this, I would say, no, it's not necessary. I'm merely doing this because uh, this is a demonstration, so I'm just gonna replace them from the kit. Having messed with everything, I make sure the carb is now set back to a 13 degree incline. Also wanna point out that before I begin, I have made this line and the margins for this line in accordance with the manual. Does not necessarily mean that it's the setup that I use. The book is extremely lean with the carb setups from the factory. And when I say extremely lean, I mean extremely lean. It doesn't necessarily mean it's what your carb is set up for, nor what it should be set up for. It's definitely not what mine is set up for. My float levels are gonna be significantly higher, albeit they should be the same. It doesn't mean I'm not gonna uh, take everybody through the adjustment procedure for it. It's just that we're not gonna expect to find mine sitting this low. That being said, we'll begin with the float level testing. We'll carefully open up this first side and let the fuel flow through the hose. Get all the air bubbles out of here. We'll take a measurement. I'll carefully grab the hose. I don't want it to become disconnected from the bottom. And we can see that no matter how I move the hose, we gotta get something behind there. We can could, we could see where the line is right here. No matter how I move the hose, we can see that it always finds its level. I'm moving it down, I'm pulling it up. It takes a bit to catch up, right? But the level never changes. And as I stated, you could see that mine are outside the constraints by a millimeter or so. Not much, just slightly outside, but we could use that as a very good example for later. So right here is the outer line, the outer limit, and just a millimeter above that, or yeah, just about a millimeter above that is the line on the tube. 
So we would call that a little bit high. So we're gonna take a look at the other side. So I close the screw, bring this hose to the same height so I could just pop it right off without losing any of the gas inside and then pop it right onto this carb. This carb actually has a little nook right here between the fuel line and the carb. You gently press it in, we'll hold it into place. Open up this screw. I've got some air in the hose. I have to make sure the air is purged. Now I grab the hose and I do the measurement again. I slide the hose up. I slide the hose down. And this tells me that, that fuel is, is freely flowing again from within the bowl to the hose. And now I bring it up to my test line and I find this one to be, again, exactly a millimeter above the top line. Both of these bowls have the exact same measurement. And for me, where I want it a little bit on the high side, that the bike doesn't run lean. This is a perfect setup as I have this bike tuned. I personally would not be making any adjustments again, but I will show how. Let me point out the lines here. And while I realize it might be difficult to see fuel in a line, here is the line for the fuel. We can see that the top line right here on the hose. And right here is the very top line for the parameter that I made for the carb. So it's just about a millimeter above that. And now I close off this carb. Having finished the testing, we're gonna be addressing the bowl seals, the float height, the float needle, throttle position sensor, the heaters, and the solenoids in part two. So please click up here on this link to go to part two now. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?